Does the path an airplane takes from Tokyo to Denver really curve like this? And if so, why? The answer actually blew my mind just a little bit. But first, I recently left Tokyo at 4.15 on a Sunday afternoon and landed in Denver at 11.48 on a Sunday morning after traveling for 11 hours, which had me thinking, did I just break time? There are 24 time zones around our planet. Each one is about 15 degrees of longitude and width, but sometimes that changes because of geographical reasons like mountains or political reasons like boundaries of countries or states. China opted to go with one time zone instead of five. Bold move. Time zones arose because Earth rotates 15 degrees every hour, and 24 hours times 15 degrees equals 360, one full rotation. So during my flight, I went forward nine time zones in nine hours, back 24 hours because I crossed the international date line. This took 11 hours, getting me there four hours ahead of the time where I started. So no, I didn't break time, it's just a little weird. Something was troubling me as I tried to sleep on my flight. If we left at 4.15 p.m. and would arrive at 11.48 a.m., what was the sun doing outside? I couldn't see out. Was it going backwards in the sky? Did it set or rise? Now imagine a line that starts at due south. It rises up to the highest point above you, which is called your zenith, and then it continues to due north. This is called the meridian. And as the sun rises in the east and gets higher and higher in the sky, at noon, it's going to reach the meridian, its highest point. We call this AM for anti-meridian. And then the sun will continue its journey as it sets over in the west. And this is post-meridian or PM. So here's the position of Tokyo at 4.15 PM on the day side of Earth. And here's Denver, my destination on the night side of Earth. During our 11 hour flight, the Earth made one half rotation. And as a result, we zoomed right through the night side of Earth. Landing in Denver when the sun was at its highest point on the sky, right on the meridian at noon. Now, would a plane really go from 36 degrees latitude at Japan to 52 degrees latitude over the Aleutian Islands and back to 40 degrees at Denver? It seems to me it would just make more sense to go in a straight line from point A to point B. But there's a problem with maps. They're a two-dimensional representation of a three-dimension sphere and unfortunately distort our perception of Earth. To find the quickest route between Tokyo and Denver, I'm going to take a string and pull it tight so that it automatically falls along the shortest path between the two. And there you have it. The string follows the flight path almost exactly. I even measured the two routes using string, and it turns out the one that follows the lines of latitude was 12.2% longer. But there's another thing pilots have to take into consideration when choosing their course, wind. During World War II, Americans began finding mysterious objects like this one scattered across the countryside. Upon closer inspection, we found that they were laden with explosives. It turns out that these were Japanese balloon bombs, but how did they get here? Well, in the 1920s, a Japanese meteorologist discovered the jet stream, seen here in red. Well, balloon bombs and airplanes can both use the wind to get across the Pacific Ocean from Japan to North America. And an interesting fact, American geologists were able to pinpoint the exact beaches where these balloons launched from using evidence in the form of sand. <laughs> Science is so cool. Speaking of balloons, I had this idea. If the Earth is rotating, why don't we just take balloons up into the sky, let the Earth rotate underneath, and then come back down somewhere new? Brilliant, right? A billion dollar idea. Only there's one problem. As you can see, with planes and balloons going across the Pacific Ocean, the air rotates with the Earth because of friction. The ground pushes on the air molecules touching it, they push on the air molecules touching them, and pretty soon the sky is moving with us. Which makes sense. Otherwise, as the Earth rotates at hundreds of miles per hour under the atmosphere, it would be like the world's worst hurricane. So a lot is going on when you fly. There's time getting all messed up, wind is blowing, the Earth is a giant rotating sphere. It's amazing to me how man-made creations like airplanes, time zones, and science bring the world together and explain what the heck is going on. What are you curious about? Let me know.